In Calculus 1, we learned how to calculate the rate of change when given a starting and ending population that developed over a set time interval. For example, a population that increases from 100 to 500 in thousands from 1990 to 2000 has the following rate of change. We do the change in population, 5,000 minus 1,000, over the change in time, the years 2000 to 1990. So that gives us 400 divided by 10, which equals 40. Again, this is in thousands. We interpret this by saying that the population increased by 40,000 people each year. This is known as the absolute rate of change. However, populations are typically modeled by a percentage by which they change. So then, how do we find the percentage by which a population changes? Let's add on to our previous example. If the population grows by 40,000 people per year, then the percent by which the rate changes is found by dividing the absolute growth rate, which was 40,000, which we represent as 40, by the original population, which was 100. 40 divided by 100 equals 0.4, which is 40%. So this is known as the relative growth rate. The relative growth rate of this population was 40%. Now, there's other ways to calculate this. Let's look at the math behind what's going on. Suppose we take the natural log of the population size. If we take the derivative of this function with respect to time, which is up here in the left-hand corner, the derivative of the natural log function will be p prime of t divided by p of t. This is another way that we represent the relative growth rate. Now, if we integrate both sides of this function, we have the integral from a to b, this is some time period, of p prime of t over p of t dt equals the integral of the derivative of the natural log of p dt. Now, these first two parts are just from the equation we have above. We're integrating both sides. But we know by the fundamental theorem of calculus that the second piece will be the natural log of the population at the ending point, b, minus the natural log of the population at the starting point, a. And by the rules of natural logs, we know that the difference between these two populations can be represented as the natural log of the population at time b divided by the population at time a. Let's look at some examples of how this is applied. Suppose the rate of increase of a population is 55 members per 2,000. What is the relative rate of growth? Remember, the relative growth rate is going to be the absolute growth rate, which is 55 members, divided by the population. The population was 2,000. So if we're gaining 55 members for every 2,000, then the relative growth rate will be, if we divide these, which is 0 0.0275, or 2.75%. Now let's go on to a little bit harder of an example. Suppose we have the graph below, which represents the relative growth rate. Part A. On what interval is the population increasing? By what percentage does the population increase during this interval? B. On what interval is the population decreasing? By what percentage does the population decrease on this interval? And C. By what percentage does the population change during the 15-year period shown below? Now again, this graph is of the relative growth rate, which is p prime of t over p of t, over 15 years. So let's start with part A. Now, the population will be increasing whenever we have positive area, which means area above the x-axis. If we look at our graph, we can see that we are above the x-axis between 0 and 10. So those are the years in which we're going to have an increase in population. So remember, we're looking at the integral from a to b of p prime of t over p of d dt, which we know from our earlier calculation is equivalent to the natural log of p of b divided by p of a. Now, when we talk about the integral of p prime of t over p of t, we're talking about the area under the relative growth rate curve. If you look at our picture, you can see that the area under the curve from 0 to 10 is the area of a triangle. We know how to calculate the area of a triangle. 
So using the area of the triangle, we have one half base times height. Our base is 10 units long because we're going from time 0 to time 10, and our height is 0 0.02, which we read right off the graph. Multiplying those all together, we get that the area is 0.1. So again, we used our knowledge of integrals to get that. Now, we know that that should be equivalent, this area of 0.1, to the natural log of population at our ending point divided by population at our starting point. Our ending point is 10, our starting point is 0. So the natural log of p of 10 divided by p of 0 should equal 0.1, this area under the curve. What that implies is that if we exponentiate both sides to get rid of the natural log, that the population at time 10 divided by the population at time 0 should be equivalent to e to the point 0.1. Now, e to the point 1, if you plug that in your calculator, is 1.105. Multiplying both sides of our equation, this p of 10 divided by p of 0 and the 1.105 by p of 0 will bring that term up to the right. This implies that the population at time 10 is 1.105 times the population at time 0. The number that's after the decimal point represents our rate of increase. So here, our population increases by 10.5% over these 10 years. For part b, we want to know when the population is decreasing. Our population will be decreasing whenever we have area below the x-axis. Notice that from time 10 to time 15, our area is below the x-axis. So those are the years in which the population is decreasing. So again, we can calculate the area under that curve using the area of a triangle. So again, we'll do 1 half base times height. Our base here is 5 units long because we go from years 10 to 15. And our height is negative 0 0.01. That's the y value we get when we're measuring the height of this triangle, which gives us negative 0 0.025. So again, that tells us that the natural log of p of 15, our ending point, divided by p of 10, our starting point, should equal the area of that triangle, which was negative 0 0.025. Again, we can exponentiate both sides, which will get rid of the natural log, and that tells us the population at time 15 divided by the population at time 10 equals e to the negative 0 0.025, which, if you plug in your calculator, will give you 0.9753. This implies that the population at time 15 is equal to 0.9753 p of 10. So that means that the population at time 15 is only 97.53% of the population at time 10. If you do 1 minus this decimal, that'll give you how much you are decreasing your population each year. So 1 minus 0.9753 is 2.47. So our population decreases by 2.47% from years 10 to 15. For part C, by what percentage does the population change during the 15-year period shown? We want to use the same method as we did for parts A and B. We have an expectation that the population will increase, since from time 0 to time 10, we increase 10.5%, and from 10 to 15, we decrease 2.47%. So we know the increase was a little bit larger than the decrease. So the total change in population over the 15-year period is going to be the positive area. So when we did 1 half base times height for the positive area, we got 0.1 plus the negative area. When we did 1 half base times height here, we got negative 0 0.025. So that means our net area is 0 0.075 for our entire interval. Using the same method of exponentiation, we get the natural log of the population at time 15 over the population at time 0 equals 0 0.075 total. Again, we exponentiate both sides, and this implies that e to the 0 0.075 is 1.07788. Multiplying the initial population up, we get that the population at time 15 is 1.07788 times the population at time 0. So we know that the population grew by approximately 7.8%.